Okay, so welcome back now to part two of the editing of the Debonair's photo shoot. And what you see on the screen is where we were when we left off after part one when we removed all the clutter from the background. So what we're going to do this time around is we're going to add some contrast. We're also going to do a little bit of dodging and burning. And then we're going to quickly show you a technique that I use to get a little bit more detail out in some of the areas on the picture, like in the car and maybe also on the tarmac in front of the guys who are sat down. So the first thing we're going to do to keep things nice and simple is we're going to flatten this layer. So we've only got one, one sort of background copy here. We're then going to add some curves and some contrast to the picture. Now there are a number of ways that I add contrast to the picture and in fact most times when I do some editing it probably changes from photograph to photograph. But on this one we're going to keep it simple and we're going to use a curves adjustment layer. And that's found on the right hand side of our screen. Right at the very top here we have our adjustment layers and the third one along is the curves. And that brings up the curves dialog box. All we're going to do then at the top where it says curves and default when these two little drop down arrows here we're just going to select medium contrast and that just adds in a pre-programmed S curve to give us the contrast that we can now see that's been added to the picture. One thing to remember when you do add contrast is it doesn't just darken the, darken the shadows and brighten the highlights but it also affects the colours in the picture as well. So if we look at Dave who's in the middle here we can see when the contrast is added is a lot brighter especially in the in the skin tones and we can we can sort of reduce that by changing the blend mode of that curves layer. So if we click on the blend modes and we go down to luminosity, what we're telling the curves to do then is only affect the tones in the picture, i.e. the dark working through to the light parts of the picture and not work on the colours. So that will generally help to keep the skin tones roughly how they were when we took the photo in the first place. So that's the curves there, that's the, the contrast done there. Now because it's on its own adjustment layer, we can also make use of opacity. So that's at 100% with the contrast added. That's with no contrast. And I obviously don't want it all the way through to 100%. I'm going to probably go for around about, uh, where are we, sort of 60% uh, will probably be about right for this one. Yeah, 60%. So that's the contrast added. We're then going to flatten it again to keep things nice and simple. And then we're going to duplicate this layer just so that we've got an area, a picture to work on and our main photograph is still protected. Now we're going to do a little bit of dodging and burning and for this particular picture it's mainly dodging and that means brightening up certain parts within the picture itself. And looking at it now the main area we're going to work on is just in the car here where all this lovely suspension is. So we're going to use the dodge tool and we can get to that by pressing O on our keyboard or coming over to the tools bar on the left hand side and selecting one of the tools here. We've got Dodge, Burn and Sponge and we're going to use the Dodge tool. Now when we select the Dodge tool or even the Burn tool come to think of it, at the top of our screen we get a number of options and we've got Range where we get the options of Shadows, Midtones and Highlights and for the moment we're going to use just Midtones with an exposure of around 20% and just make sure there's a little tick in here where it says Protect Tones so that when we are doing our dodging and burning the colours remain intact within the picture as well where we're working. So we're now going to come down to work on this part of the car. So using our right and left bracket keys we increase the size of the brush that we're using and we're just going to paint around the area of the suspension here just a few times and every time we release it and press down again it adds an extra 20% so in some areas it will be 40% worth of dodging has been done. And also over this little uh, headlamp here and maybe a little bit on the car, the paintwork itself as well. Now because it's quite a dark area we're going to have to change to work on some of the shadows. So again we've come over to the top of the screen and where it says range rather than working on mid-tones we can use on the shadow area and again I'll probably keep that to around about the 20% mark. And as before using our right and left bracket keys we can increase the size of the brush or decrease it and just paint a few times around the suspension in the car and we'll start to see some of the detail coming out here. Some of this lovely detail and we'll paint over the headlamp. Um, a little bit of this chrome as well to bring out that so it really does stand out just that little bit more. Okay, so if I turn that layer off we can see what we've done. So you can see it's quite a lot of detail being brought out there, which is quite nice. Okay, maybe that's a little bit too strong at 100% because it's on its own layer. We can just lower the opacity. So that's all the dodging that we can see and that's no dodging. So maybe somewhere in between just so it does a bit too, doesn't look too unrealistic. Again, we'll probably go for around 60 to 70. I'll leave it at 70, something like that. Okay, so that's the dodging that was done in this particular picture. So we can see straight away there's a little more detail in the car there. The last thing we're going to do is add some detail to the car itself and maybe this little tarmac in front of the guys as well. So as before, we're going to keep things simple by flattening it, 
flattening it. And then we're going to uh, drag the background copy over the new layer icon to get a duplicated copy so we can work on that and protect the main picture. Now, to get some detail out, these are the few steps we're going to cover here first of all. We're going to come over to our layers panel with the blend modes and we're going to change the blend mode of the background copy to vivid light. And that will do that, add all sorts of craziness is now going on with the picture. We're then going to go to the top of our screen, choose image, adjustments and invert. So we now end up with this particular stage. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to filter, blur and then surface blur. And that will bring up this dialog box just here. Okay, this is the blur, surface blur dialog box. We've got two options to us, we've got radius and threshold. Now for this one here, try and keep these figures fairly low for this one. So we're gonna go for around about the 20, 21%, something like that. And threshold, what we wanna do, I generally have the threshold twice the amount of what I do the radius. If we go too high with the threshold, what you'll see happen is, when eventually it finishes processing it, you'll see like a halo around the guys here. Can you see the little halo going around their heads, around their arms? So if we used it like that, when we come to the final result, it looks too, too artificial. So I'm gonna come down to around about the 40% mark, something like that, 42 will be fine, and click OK. So that's what we have so far. Clearly we're not finished yet, so what we want to do is we now need to change the blend mode of this to soft light, but we can't at the moment because at the moment it's set to vivid light and we can only add one blend mode to each layer. So what we're going to do is we're going to merge all these layers, but we're gonna merge them above. Now it might sound a bit odd, but to do that what we do is hold down our Alt or Option key on our keyboards and where it says Merge Visible, we're gonna hold down our Alt or Option key and then click on Merge Visible. And what you'll see happen is, the background and the background copy have been merged into one layer, which now becomes layer one. So what we'll do then is we will turn that layer off, or we could even delete it. Makes no difference, you'll see, because those all those two layers were merged into this one layer called layer one. And then what we'll do is change the blend mode of that to soft light. So what we can see now when I turn that layer on and off is how much detail has been added. So that's with it off and that's with it on. You can see there's a heck of a lot of detail being added into the picture, but I only really want it in the car and in the tarmac and maybe a couple of other areas. So what we can do is we can add a mask, a white mask, and as before we always talked about in when we had masks, white reveals, black conceals. So we wanna conceal what the edit, what the edit, uh, all the detail in the whole picture so we can bring back it only in certain parts. So we need the mask to be black. So to do that, we go to image, adjustments, and invert. Now to paint back, the detail in certain areas of the pictures, we need to paint on that black mask with a white brush. So we're gonna come over to our foreground colors here, change the foreground to white, and we're gonna press B on our keyboard to select a brush. And we're gonna go for a brush, which is around about 25% hardness, something like that, and a fairly decent size. And all we're going to do then, Again, we can use our right and left bracket keys to in increase or decrease the size of our brush. And we're just gonna paint over the car itself to bring back some of the detail that we just did in that last step. So we're painting over the detail here. That's at 100%, so we can see straight away just the detail in the car is showing through. And then what I think I'll do is I'm gonna increase the size of my brush and I'm gonna paint all over the tarmac as well. So we can see the detail in the tarmac has been brought out. And maybe a couple of other areas that I might work on, or just add a little bit of detail, are in the shoes of these guys here. But I'm gonna probably change the opacity of the brush there to around about 50%, because it doesn't need to be as strong as what the detail is on the car. And we'll just paint over the shoes like so. And there we go, come over to Mick over here. And a little bit of detail in his shoe. And we'll zoom out. And there we go, so that's at 100%. Maybe a little bit too strong. So again, we can use the opacity on that layer because it's obviously on its own layer here. So to control the strength or weakness of the uh, detail we've added, I'm just gonna lower the opacity down to around about, uh, again, I seem to like 60 to 70, so I'm probably got 70%. So you can see there is the detail being added in. If I just zoom in for you a little bit, if we look into the area where the suspension is, we can see a lot more detail in there. And also at the bottom of the screen, you'll see a lot more detail in the tarmac as well. So there you go, that's it, contrast added, a little bit of dodging and burning, mainly dodging, and we've shown you how to add some detail to the picture as well. So we'll finish off the picture in part three, so I shall see you then.